<laughs> well, thank you, Sharon. Well, good evening and welcome to uh, Grace Street Church and for our candlelight service this evening. Does everybody have a candle now, courtesy of Sharon? Mm -hmm. okay. And because we were all trying to figure it out, just, just I'm going to take this and put it back over here. We are very thankful that you all could join us this evening. It's just joy. It's joyful. I mean, the weather's absolutely beautiful outside right now. But there's music playing out there, and I can hear it. And it's just, it's setting the mood, and it's uh, the candlelight, the lights that we have on in the sanctuary here this evening. It's just, just so thankful for the reason that we're here tonight, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just a couple of announcements. We do, we will be having service on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Pastor Mark has been working on the message and uh, looking forward to hearing that. And then uh, in January, we will be showing Miracles from Heaven. And I didn't write it down. So is it the 8th? Yes, January. it's January. And doors will open at 5.30 and the movie at 6. So please join us for that. Mark, if you want to... Come up and uh, we'll get started with our service this evening. Well, good evening. Our call to worship tonight is uh, a little different, but this evening's call to worship is really a call to come together, uh, to come together as family and to come together as friends and brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, to celebrate together the most anticipated birth of our Savior our King of Kings, the birth of Jesus Christ. So our call today, our, our, uh, tonight, is a responsive call. And after I read aloud each section of the scripture, I want us to join in unison and respond together with, O come, O come, Emmanuel. The prophet Isaiah said, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The priest Zechariah said before John's birth, Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us on the path of peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The Apostle John said, The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. O come, O come, Emmanuel. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through His prophet Isaiah, as reflected in the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God is coming into our lives in a new way. The birth of a Savior Jesus is the renewal of our hope. A reminder that Christ is coming back again to keep watch for the light for it is drawing nearer and nearer to us O come O come Emmanuel. Christmas Eve, candle adoration. This is from John 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Tonight we come to light one candle 
It is a candle to remind us that Jesus is our light. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords who has come to offer salvation to all mankind. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And this candle, the Christ candle, stands to represent that light for all to see. Jesus is the light of the world. The light is not hidden under a basket, nor is the light, light placed in a closet. The light is placed for all to see. For Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men into myself. The candle is to remind us of Jesus. He is the reason for the season. He is the reason that all of us are here this evening. Please join us in singing the songs here.
Tonight we'll be reading from Luke chapter 2. We'll start now with verses 1 through 5. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry, and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby, as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it wondered at all the signs which were told to them by the shepherds. No. 
from Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. At this time, we'd like you to light your lights. So just twist the tops on them and hopefully they'll come right on for you. There is darkness in the world. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Yet in the midst of it, there shines a light. It is the light of Christ Jesus. It is not darkness that gets rid of the dark. It is the light that dispels the darkness. He has come to overcome the darkness in our lives. That's not all. He has asked us to share the light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. The city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on the light stand, where it gives light to all those who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. So let us share the light with one another. As we do this tonight, I'd like you to look upon the lights and understand that Christ is the light of your life. A way through the darkness in this world. We live in a fallen and a dark world. And Christ is the way. He is the truth and the life. He is the light.
this point in time, we'd like to partake in Holy Communion. And as we do that today, I'd like you to focus on the sacrifice that Christ made for us. We had a Savior born into our world. He came fully human and yet fully God. He came and took on the sins of all mankind, for everyone. He came as a Savior not for just certain people, but for all people. He came to save us from our sins, not just some of the sins, but all of our sins. To release us from the bondage of sin and death. And on the cross, he took those sins, and he took them from us. And he made his sacrifice, made his own sacrifice, and took those sins away from us so that we would have an option to go and have eternal life through him and through the sacrifice that he made for us. So as we take communion tonight, I want you to remember that sacrifice that was made. The gift of eternal life gift that can never be repaid. The gift of salvation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said to the disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. And likewise, later in the meal, he took the cup and after he blessed it and filled it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And each time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. A mighty act of salvation, a mighty act of love, a mighty act of self-sacrifice self for us. Not though we deserved it, but because it was a gift given to us. So this Christmas, as we are giving gifts to one another, let us remind ourselves of the gift that Christ gave us, the greatest gift of all, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. As we come to the close of our candlelight service this evening, I was just over just where Mark is right now, and I was taking in the lights that go around the framing in here. And if I looked outside, those lights extend. The reflection extends out. But it doesn't just extend out into the street. It extends out and it's like it's connecting to the lights that are wrapped around the trees along the street. And I'm reminded by God that that's how his light is. It's reflected through us out into the world. He sent his son for us. We're celebrating birth and ultimately we're celebrating and preparing for his return Father as we prepare to close out our service this evening and go our separate ways so many things are going on people are struggling with addictions People are struggling with their relationships and their finances. They're struggling with their own self-worth. But Father, it is the gift that you gave us through your Son, Jesus Christ, that brings us redemption from all that, that gives us hope beyond all those things. That even though we may hit speed bump 
and, and a speed bump and, and those humps in the road time and time again, day after day, sometimes it feels like it's just a never-ending cycle. We can find peace in you, Father. We can find the peace that is beyond anything we can understand. And we thank you. We thank you that we've been able to come together tonight as your church, whether we're here in person or whether people are joining us online tonight. Father, you, you are giving us a gift way beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Father, that gift, we pray that as people hear your message, whether they come here on a Sunday or go to another church or they're hearing it through their friends or their family, their co-workers, that Father, we would be that voice, that light in the wilderness as John was, preparing the way for your son's second coming. So, Father, as we prepare to go out of here tonight, I add into this prayer a charge to everyone that is here with us this evening in person, online with us tonight, or who will watch this sometime in the future. I charge you to go out into the world and be like these lights and extend out beyond these four walls and into the world, letting everyone know who you are, the hope that you give us, the peace that you give us, the absolute joy that you give us, and the ultimate love that you give us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. amen. I think I can speak for both Mark and Bruce and our wives and our families in saying, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us.